Today's episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bad Flashes. Today's my last video, guys. Today's my last video. In this closet. You guy tricked you. You thought I was gonna call it quits. You thought I was gonna hang in the towel, put it on the on the rack. I never quit. I can never quit you. I love you. Today, we're gonna be talking about how to set up and scan your film negatives with another camera. A digital camera. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about DSLR scanning. We're gonna be taking pictures of pictures. <laughs> I'm coming out. I want the world to know that I'm coming out of my closet. I'm getting a new office. That's right. I'm trading in my Harry Potter style nook for a full fledged bedroom equipped with my very own snowy white pet. She's kind of like a mix between Hegwing and Crookshanks. I am really going to miss this place, but it's going to be nice not being trapped into a closet every time you want to make a video. <laughs> There's a lot of back sweat that happens. It's hot in here. But you're not here to see a grown man cry over his closet. You're here for some camera scanning. So let's get into it. What is camera scanning? Well, it's a way of getting good use out of your shitty old gross digital camera. <laughs> no, what I mean is it's a really viable way of scanning your negatives, opposed to the more traditional way of flatbed scanning. At first I was using my Epson V550 for all my scanning, both 120 and 35, but then I just started hating all my results, specifically for 35 millimeter. Like vomit in my mouth and swallowing it? Hatred. I know you know what I'm talking about and I know you know it's gross. So that's when I turned to a more hippie alternative approach. You know, like what all the cool kids are doing nowadays. Honestly, it's very self-aware taking pictures of pictures. It's very meta. And to lay it all on the line and spoil this entire episode, the results are fantastic. And the whole process is much faster. Anyone who's ever scanned with a flatbed scanner knows the pain. And since I just camera scanned 66 rolls straight, I think I know a thing or two. So let's get into some tips and tricks when getting started with camera scanning. But before I do, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Now, I know you know what Skillshare is, but if you spent the last year crying into a cookie dough ice cream tub instead of expanding your mind, let me break it down for you. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers a bunch of bananas. <laughs> no, 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 not bananas, classes. Classes for furthering your creative journey. They have tons to choose from. Classes on music, art, web design. Pick one, pick any of them, pick them all. I know you guys are all masters of photography by now. So why don't you brush up on another creative outlet like I have? I have taken several classes that have furthered my graphic design knowledge and have helped me further my animation techniques. And the great thing is that some of the classes are less than an hour. So you can become a master of illustration in no time. And the cherry on top, there are no ads. So your creative juices can continue to flow while you binge your favorite classes. And for only $10 a month, it's hard to beat. For the first thousand people who decide to sign up, you'll get a free trial for the premium membership. So click that link in the description below. Let's learn some stuff together. Back at it. The best part about this approach of scanning is that it's modular. You can upgrade as you go along. Say you need more megapixels later, get a new camera. Need a new light source? Shop on Amazon. You're upgrading from two buck chuck to a $13 bottle of wine? I approve that purchase. So what are the things that you'll need to get started with camera scanning? So you're gonna have to get yourself a converting software. You'll need a negative holder to keep your negatives flat while scanning, a light source of some sort, copy stand or tripod, Get a copy stand. Don't do the tripod thing. It's a pain in the ass. Canned air or a rocket blower, a macro lens of some sort to get really close to your negatives. And can't forget that gross digital camera. You, you, gotta, you gotta have megapixels somewhere. So, yeah. Now, there are a few other things that I do suggest, but they're a little bit more optional. A bubble level, a shutter release cable, gloves, and vodka. You know, so you can drink away your sorrows for the shitty shots you just took. It's my life. Now I know price is gonna be a big factor to the scanning solution that you decide to jump into. An Epson flatbed scanner is much cheaper right off the bat. A one-stop shop for all your digital scanning needs. But chances are, if you're watching this channel, you already have some of these things lying around, especially a DSLR or mirrorless camera. As for your inverting process, you obviously don't have to go with Negative Lab Pro. There are some other solutions like Film Lab or even just inverting the curves yourself. There are plenty of videos online to show you how to do that. At the end of the day, I prefer the colors I get out of Negative Lab Pro. And honestly, inverting curves is a pain in the ass. As for a light source, if you have an iPad laying around, you can also use that to illuminate your negatives. Now, if you're trying to use this video as a justification for buying an iPad, go right ahead. I support you. So you ready to see how to set it up? Come with me. <laughs> Come on. We're not actually going anywhere. We're, st we're staying. We're staying in here to do this thing. So. <laughs> 
Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is figure out where you're going to be scanning at. So pick a dungeon or a closet. Why am I leaving again? But nonetheless, you want a dark space so that no stray light gets to your negative while scanning. You also need a solution for keeping your negatives flat while scanning. The next thing you want to grab is a film holder. I actually have two. The essential film holder, which has masks for 120 and 35 millimeter, and the negative supply basic 35. Now the essential film holder will run you about $120 USD. And the basic carry is going to run you $99, but that only does 35 millimeter. Oh, well, Caleb, oh, I have both. Well, after scanning 66 rolls with the essential film holder, I have some gripes. I was testing this unit the other day at a camera show, and it fixed all my gripes for 35. So I had to get it. So let's set things up. Yeah, let's just do it. Rah, rah, boom, rah, bow. Just so that you know, I kind of have a jankity operation going. Copy stand. What is this, you may ask? This is the light table. It illuminates. Like I said, I don't want any stray light getting to the negative. So I made this cardboard cutout so that my essential film holder can fit right on top, illuminating just the negative, reducing all light around my copy stand. If I turn my lights off, that's what you get. There's also a light over here, so don't, don't, don't pay that attention. The next thing you'll want to do is grab your camera and your macro lens. Now my macro lens is a 55 millimeter, so I also picked up these macro extension tubes that help get the film closer to the focus plane. Boom, this on the camera's extension. You can obviously use any DSLR. One thing that's really nice, the Sony screens can articulate so you can see it from a different angle. So I'll just put it on the copy stand here. The nice thing about copy stands is you can use the lever to get it closer to the negative. Next thing you'll want to do, center up on here. Now, me being extremely smart, uh, I made myself a focusing strip on a piece of unused 35 millimeter film. So just take a Sharpie, make yourself some marks, and then you'll know where to focus, especially if you're using a manual lens and even an autofocus lens, it's perfect. You also wanna make sure that your lens is on an F8 to get prime focus. That is usually the sweet spot of any lens. So yeah, just set it to F8 or F11. Okay, back at it. Just put this, the focusing strip. Now you can focus up. Use your tools on your camera to be able to focus on the piece of film. It's kind of close, just kind of get it there. I do this dance of getting it as close as I can. Okay, too much. And there. Focused up, baby. Put a bubble level on. Make sure that you are level. Okay, don't forget yourself a cable release. Canned air. Gaff tape for holding when you have your gloves on. Rocket blower. Another pro tip. When you're using a phone and listening to music, cut one of the little gloves off. Can't wake up your phone, but now you can. Now you can use it. The next thing I suggest is be on aperture priority mode. That will adjust your shutter so that each individual shot is properly exposed. You got the macro lens on, you got everything set, and you just put it in. Just, that's the thing. So the thing with the essential film holder and, and the 35 millimeter holder specifically is that it takes a little effort getting it into the hole at first. Line up the first frame, little blow blow, little blow blow, snap. Move on. Next frame. Little blow, blow, little blow, blow, snap. Next frame. Never touching the camera. Blow, 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 snap. The thing that I'm not a huge fan of with the central film holder is how this wiggles so much, making your mask always never quite the same. So that's why I think I'm gonna use this for the 35. I digress. And this goes for about, you know, 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes, just goes through 10 minutes. Yee! But for 120, it's basically just the same. So since the essential film holder also has the ability to scan 120, all you have to do is remove these little wing nuts, take off the 35 millimeter mask, and there you go. You can expose your medium format frame in both six by seven and six by nine. So 120 is much better for the essential film holder than 35 is. It doesn't have much give and take on the side to side. But the one thing that is kind of a pain is when you have to feed through the 120 and get it through the other side, you need a little bit of a tool just to kind of boop, boop, push it up and into the slot. I've also made myself a focusing guide for 120 on a piece of unused film. So you can set up the same thing. Now, use your little tool, push it up to get it in the slot. Then you can focus up you're ready to rock and roll. The good thing about the essential film holder is that it has a diffusion panel to diffuse the light underneath. Unfortunately, the 35 millimeter carrier from negative supply does not, but I'm just gonna put this on top and use it just like so. Put the focusing strip in, make sure you're focusing up, make sure you're centered. 
Man, you see how smooth that one is? Just fits right in, just goes right there. Squirt, 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 squirt. Another tip that I have for you is if you're scanning multiple rolls at the same time, if you wanna keep your rolls segregated, take a picture of your hand before you start the new roll. That way, when you're looking at your files in the computer, you know which roll is which. So what are the big takeaways? It's fast, it's sharp, it's easy. What more can you ask for? Get yourself a decent macro lens, get yourself a decent camera. They all work really well, and the great thing is you can upgrade later. The thing I have to say about the macro lens is that I have a 55, and it works, but I think I prefer a 100 mil macro instead. It just gives you more flexibility when composing your image. So don't forget to make yourself a focus strip, and just have fun. Go to town. Well, here we are at the end of the episode. Hope you learned a thing or two about setting up your camera for DSLR scanning your film negatives. It's been a wild ride. Me in this closet? Not really. We're just editing. <laughs> Well, join me next time where I'm going to be in a different place. And I might show you the pool. And uh, you might see me in a bathing suit. Who knows? Bye. Tell me it's all right. Tell me it's all right. <laughs>